As of right now, the Eligu Mars 3 is locked down to only work with Sheetu Systems Sheetbox Slicer, and any future printers from any manufacturer will be locked down too, as long as they are built on the Sheetu ecosystem. The firmware running on these printers is set up to only accept files that are signed off by Sheetu's software, and while there has been a promise of an SDK being made available eventually, we don't know which conditions, restrictions, and license fees that eventually you as the user will be paying uh, that that SDA will ultimately come with. The official Sheetbox Slicer comes in two versions, a feature limited free version and a pro version that comes as a $170 a year subscription service. So with Sheetbox being the only software option that you can use with these printers, let's check out what the differences are between Sheetbox and Sheetbox Pro and whether the pro version is even worth 170 bucks a year. Right after I tell you about today's sponsor, Soraya Tech. Soraya Tech makes a whole lineup of resins ranging from the low cost simple over the high detail build to blue, which is just simply a balanced resin optimized specifically for LCD resin printers. The newest resin is Sculpt, a high temperature material with a heat deflection temperature of 160 degrees Celsius or with the ceramic loaded Sculpt Ultra up to 220 degrees Celsius. That's better than filament prints done with ABS, which have a heat deflection temperature of only around 80 degrees, or even polycarbonate, which comes in around 170 degrees Celsius, making Ceratex Sculpt and Sculpt Ultra ideal for use cases around heat sources, or even for directly using it as a mold for, for example, vulcanizing rubber. Ceratex resins are available worldwide through resellers on Amazon or directly in Ceratex store. Check out the links in the description below. Disclosure, I guess? So I am using the free version of Sheet the Box, which you know we can get from Sheet the Box for free, and the pro version that was included with the Mars 3, which was provided to me by Eligu. Sheet2 Systems also independently contacted me about joining their affiliate program, which would pay me a referral fee every time somebody out there, like you guys, bought a Sheet the Box Pro license through a link that I could place. However, I declined that offer. So let's jump into Sheet the Box Pro and Basic. And as soon as you open these up, it's pretty clear that they are related, but not quite the same. Uh, Pro simply has a much more intuitive interface. Sheetbox Basic gives you, you know, some features up in your toolbar up top with tiny unlabeled icons, uh, and then you switch your workspaces between layout and support with the tab over here, and from layout to print with the slice button down here, and then in the print preview, you can save out your print files. In Pro, you've still got your options bar over here to the right, but at the top, you now have a ribbon style interface that, yes, works really well, but it also makes Pro look a lot more feature rich uh, compared to Basic. But a lot of the features that are now concentrated up in this ribbon area are simply just concentrated in a single spot now instead of being cluttered all throughout the UI. You know, these interfaces feel a lot like, you know, as if Sheetu Systems saw their old Sheetu Box basic interface, uh, back then still called Sheetu Box Free, decided it needed a new UI because the old one was so messy, made that new UI and then decided, oh, this turned out so much better than expected, let's charge for this. And, you know, let's just keep the old one around for the free version. So I would love to show you, you know, nice side-by-side -side layouts in the screen capture here, but both Sheetbox versions use some weird window framework that not only glitches around when you move the window, but it also doesn't support any of the window's hotkeys uh, or gestures to snap the window to one half of the screen or even to minimize or maximize it. I've actually managed to swing the window off screen a couple of times and then had no way to get it back onto the screen. The only option was to kill it from the task manager. And as far as nuisances with usability goes, Neither one is particularly usable on a laptop with a touchpad or on a touch screen even. Like <laughs> moving around or rotating the view properly simply is impossible without using an actual physical mouse or a track point. You know, I, I guess that could work pretty well too. It just seems like a rather big oversight, uh, you know, in 2021. So before we get into all the new features that Sheetabox Pro has added, let's look at the differences in the features that both of them share and that arguably you absolutely cannot do without for resin printing. So of course you get these super basic tools for moving, scaling, and rotating parts. Um, both versions also have a flatten by face tool, basically lay flat. Pro also has a auto orientation tool um, that I guess is supposed to choose an orientation that is optimal for printing, but I'm not quite sure how it actually determines optimal. 
It never chose the orientation that I would have gone for, and also it produces a different result every time you run it, so is it just random? I can't quite tell. Also, do me a favor, just randomly click that subscribe button down there, okay? <laughs> Thanks. Both Pro and Basic also have a hollowing feature that works well. You can set the wall thickness and how much processing time it should spend to get the inner contour right, and you can even add an infill structure now that still allows the trapped resin to escape. The other core feature for resin prints is, of course, support material. For some reason, it is a much bigger thing for resin prints, even though the geometry that the printer can do without supports is practically the same as on filament printers. I guess that's because supports on resin prints do come off cleaner, and the extra detail capability on resin printers just encourages printing more complex models that would need support more often, I guess? Anyway, the support features on Pro and Basic look similar as far as like your settings go, and you can even export one set of settings from one and import it into the other, but the results are quite different. So just going for auto supports on both, Basic is a lot more hesitant about starting supports on the model itself, and instead opts to do these longer stalks that reach out over to the model. These just aren't good. They're super wobbly and don't have the best chances to print well in the first place. Pro also looks like it's tying the individual support stocks together better. There is a setting for that in Basic as well, but they still look, I don't know, more solidly braced in Pro. But since there's no way to generate actually identical supports, that is pretty hard to judge. In Basic, you only get a setting that determines how dense the contact points are on the model, while in Pro, you can directly set the distance between each contact point in millimeters. I guess that's like an average distance or something. Both approaches to this setting work, but I do prefer the one in Pro. The Pro version also gives you the option to paint on support material, either by doing selection areas or by using an actual paintbrush tool. The results of that are good, especially when you use a slightly higher support density to make up for the fact that you're overall using fewer supports and instead are concentrating them onto the areas that need them the most. The tool itself is a bit counterintuitive to use, but when you handle it just right, it does exactly what you'd expect from it. I wish there was the option to create like a weighted paint where some areas have more or less dense supports, but still, uh, the better support algorithm and the ability to use them selectively is definitely the killer feature of Sheetabox Pro. And when you're placing individual support towers by hand, it also gives you the option to choose which support top piece you want for connecting the supports to the part, while Basic always chooses an appropriate one for you. But because the slicing itself is absolutely identical between Pro and Basic, I mean, the profiles are the same, uh, the print time and material use is identical. If you process the same file, you get the same result. Really, the differences are in how you can prepare that file before it gets sliced. But nothing is really stopping you from preparing your files somewhere else. For example, I tried Prusa Slicer for generating supports. You can just use the SL1 profile and tell it that your model of SL1 has a super large build area, and it will happily process STLs of any size. And the SLA support material in Prusa Slicer is excellent as well, and very similar to what Sheetabox Pro generates. Prusa Slicer doesn't do paint on supports for resin prints yet, but in any case, you can simply export the processed and supported parts as an STL from Prusa Slicer and re import them into Sheetabox Basic, and you get basically the same result. Or if you want to use another software, um, Mesh Mixer works too, as does Lychee Slicer, Blender, whatever you want to use. And the same is true for all the other new additions that are exclusive to Sheetabox Pro. Most of them aren't actual features specifically for slicing parts, uh, specifically for resin printing. They're more like, you know, preparing the files, like uh, stuff like splitting models into individual bodies, doing a plane cut, adding text to a model, advanced STL repair, like very in-depth, almost mesh lab level reworking features, or doing Boolean operations right in Sheetabox. Like, I don't see that functionality as part of what the slicer is supposed to do. I'd say that's really all stuff that should happen in the modeling stage, not doing slicing, especially since, you know, if you slice an updated part, you're going to have to do it all again. It only makes sense to have these features in here when you're not the one creating the files you print, like if you're running a print service bureau, or you're in a company that it's so large that you have no way of communicating with your modeling team, but then I doubt you'd be using sheet to base printers. But even in those cases, there's just plain better software for those tasks. 
And the last feature in Sheet the Box Pro, save the fact that you can measure parts on the model. I mean, that might be useful sometimes, but I barely ever use it. Uh, the last feature is multi-parameter slicing. It's basically simplified through these processes, and it lets you choose a completely different print profile based on either uh, a height section of your model or on how large the cross section of each layer is, or simply by a different by each different model that you're printing. And each profile is literally every setting for your printer. So you can change things like layer height and exposure times, of course, but also lift speeds and anti-aliasing settings. That can come in pretty handy when you've got a model where you've got one area of your part uh, that's super fragile and you just want to go a bit slower, but you're okay with thicker, faster layers everywhere else. Note that this is not any sort of smart settings adjustment like automatic variable layer height, or perhaps in the case of resin printing, detecting those smaller features and backing off the peel speed. This is simply you choosing a section of your part and saying, I want this printed this way, which if you need that feature can still come in pretty handy. Now, one thing I ran into is that Sheetabox, both the pro and the basic versions, don't exactly have the best performance. Yes, there are actual rendering bugs like in Sheetabox Basic, uh, your part moves first and then the rest of the scene lags behind. Um, or in Sheetabox Basic and Pro, if you zoom in too far, you actually end up in backwards land. There's probably a signed integer for zoom levels somewhere that overflows. But raw performance also is not great. Supports? Yes, those take a while to generate no matter what software you use. But just looking at how smooth, um, for example, moving the camera around your model is, even in a moderately complex scene, it's stuttery. The same setup in Prusa Slicer probably doesn't quite hit 60 FPS either, but it's a lot better. This is not a super beefy machine that I'm testing this on. It's a quad core i5 with eight gigs of RAM and integrated Intel graphics, but it doesn't even look like it's actually making use of the resources it has. I also tried the Boolean cut and yeah, that one has some serious wait time to it. Trying to do the same thing in Blender, much faster. So. Is Sheetabox Pro worth 170 bucks a year? No, absolutely not, for most people. So in a typical use case, probably the only thing that you'll actually be using is the improved support material in Sheetabox Pro, which you can generate in a third-party tool as well. Sheetabox basic supports are totally usable too in many cases, but the ones from Sheetabox Pro or Prusa Slicer are just more reliable in more situations. Uh, and in Pro, being able to control where support should be generated without placing every single support tower by hand is also pretty nice. But as always, if you really need those features, then you've got to get the version that supports them. I really hope that the basic version stays at least as good as it is today. It wouldn't be the first time for a company to slowly strip away features from their free offerings and eventually going, but yeah, you can pay for them. I don't know if there is a built-in expiry date on the basic versions of sheet -to box but with new versions already demanding for you to update the printer's firmware, which conveniently also locks on the older printers you might have, uh, I can see sheet trying to go down that route. I'm not sure they would actually go for that, but it would fit in with them pulling that sneaky lock and move with the firmwares in the recent printers. In any case, I hope that helped shed some light on what new innovations Sheetabox Pro brings to the table. Thanks again to Sorytech and their high temperature sculpt resin for sponsoring this video. And if you enjoyed the content, make sure to get subscribed. And if you really love what I'm doing here, consider supporting the channel on Patreon over here or through YouTube memberships. Thank you for watching, keep on making, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.